Okay, I think we'll get started. So, uh, hello everyone, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, welcome to this webinar. It's a developer webinar uh, talking about timeline analytics and visual timelines for graph applications. Just to uh, say a few words of introduction. So, my name's Dan. I look after product management here at Cambridge Intelligence. Um, I'll do a little bit of an introduction today and, and give you a, a, a brief tour of the uh, software we're going to be talking about. But most of the work today will be done by my colleague Katerina. Uh, she'll introduce herself when she starts her section of the uh, webinar. So the plan for today is, uh, after a little bit of introduction from me, I'll talk a little bit about why people want to do timeline analysis and uh, visual analytics of timelines. Um, and then Katerina is going to dive into the, the Chronograph SDK, uh, the toolkit, and uh, talk about five reasons developers love Chronograph, uh, five reasons why Katerina loves Chronograph anyway, and hopefully you'll agree with her. So we'll, uh, we'll go through that. The whole thing will take about 30 minutes, um, and then at the end we'll have some Q&A. So if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them using the GoToWebinar panel. It should be obvious how to do that. So there's a chat feature, there's a Q&A feature. Um, we'll check both of those, ask us your questions. Thanks to those of you who sent in some questions in advance. We have a couple of questions uh, which came in in advance. We'll go through those at the end as well. Uh, and the question that everybody always asks is, is the session being recorded? Uh, yes, it is. Um, so assuming that all records fine, then we will send a link out afterwards. So um, without further ado, let's uh, let's get started. So I thought I, I would just give a little bit of background uh, as to who we are and what we do. For those of you who don't know us, I know lots of you already our, are customers of our other products, uh, Keylines or Regraph. Today we're going to be talking about the Chronograph product, but at Cambridge Intelligence we make um, all of these products. They're all toolkits for helping you build data visualization and highly interactive data visualizations into your applications. And in particular, we work in, in certain uh, industry verticals or use cases. Uh, one big area is law enforcement and intelligence, looking at uh, understanding major, major crimes or uh, organized crimes or looking at uh, uh, intelligence data such as call data records and understanding, understanding that data in context. Uh, we work very heavily with cybersecurity and other kinds of uh, network management, whether that's IT networks or telecoms networks, trying to help people draw live uh, interactive pictures of their, of their networks and understand what's happening. Uh, it could be threat intelligence, could be uh, forensics on a cyber attack, could be root cause analysis of a telecommunications problem. Uh, and we work quite heavily as well in anti-fraud areas, uh, anything from insurance fraud to uh, blockchain forensics where you're trying to uh, to follow money. Uh, that's a picture of the Bitcoin blockchain you're seeing in the background there. So a very wide range of applications and what we do, we don't provide a finished application, we make toolkits to help you build your own applications um, and uh, we provide uh, very rich interactive software development sites like uh, this one where you can uh, see the code and um, see demonstrations of the toolkits and uh, try and build exactly what you want very quickly uh, with a lot of help support and uh, demonstration examples and example code. Um, so that's what we do and today we want to talk a bit about one of our newer products which is which is Chronograph uh, which is a toolkit for basically for building timelines. So I thought I'd start by just talking about um, why a timeline. I think everyone knows what a timeline is so I'm not going to explain what is a timeline but um, why is it important to put this kind of analytics into an application? I think uh, a few different use cases for it. Uh, in particular, it's all about looking at patterns and um, in many cases it's about suspicious activity. So for example, if someone's credit card has been cloned or, or um, someone's using somebody's credit card fraudulently, you might want to know what were they doing, uh, what kind of transactions were they making in the days and weeks previous to their card being used. So we can try and spot um, uh, common patterns. That's that's one example. Um, it might not be what happened before, it might be what happened afterwards. So um, after this user clicked a phishing email link, then what processes were triggered on their computer? What files were downloaded? What privileges were granted? Um, doing detailed analysis of, of what happened in a complex system. Uh, it's very important to understand the sequence of events and uh, what triggered what cause and effect, those kinds of questions. And obviously a timeline is very good for doing that. 
patterns and behaviors are also really, really interesting. And uh, we'll be showing you some examples of this later on, but um, asking questions like, uh, you know, what's typical activity or is there a repeating pattern? Is there something that happens at two o'clock every day at the same time or uh, between the same people? Again, these are insights that uh, a timeline can help you uncover. And we're going to talk about how to do that. Um, and the last example I have is, is follow the money. This is a uh, this could be for money laundering or uh, anti-fraud or compliance, but anything where you need to figure out where the money went, proceeds of crime or something like that. And you want to understand hidden in all those transactions, there might be a, a path, a, a flow of money going from one place to another. And again, a timeline helps you piece together the sequence of those transactions. Um, so we, we think there's a lot of applications for this. Um, so the next question that I wanted to talk about just briefly is, is, is you know, why is this so difficult? Why? Uh, why do we need a, a toolkit for doing this? And I think we, we did a lot of um, uh, looking at what else is out there to try and work out how to make chronograph different. Um, there's a lot of tools out there for making infographic kind of timelines, I think. Uh, if you search for timeline JavaScript toolkit, you'll find thousands of things. There are lots of things out there, but they, they tend to be about producing uh, quite kind of static, simple infographics. So they work very well if you have five or six uh, or maybe 20 items, but if you have a raw data source with thousands of phone calls, um, they're probably not going to work very well. Um, there's also a lot of toolkits out there for doing project planning, Gantt charts, that kind of thing. Um, they are all timelines for sure, but they're not really aimed at this kind of analytical use case of finding insight within the timeline. They're more presentational. Um, the, the data model is also a challenge. You'll, you'll see some of this, but uh, a lot of the data we typically deal with in these applications is complex data, it's connections. It's not just an event that happens to a person, it's an event that connects two people together or 10 people together or um, uh, passes money from one system to another. So the, the data modeling is challenging. Um, and it's, it's all very well to produce a static picture, but when you want to do a real world use case like cryptocurrency forensics or um, finding a, a fraudster in a collection of people, then um, uh, it can be very hard to customize them and fit them in. So we really designed Chronograph to solve these problems and have a single uh, component library that allows you to put timelines into products that uh, that just work with this kind of data really well. Uh, I'll give you a very quick tour and then I'll hand over to Katarina. So um, chronograph.io is the site that you would get access to if you um, uh, try out the product. We'll talk about how to give it a try uh, later on. Um, and it lets you build these tools. I'm going to actually start with a version that's on our um, Keylines site. For those of you who are Keylines customers already or know it or Regraph, you'll be very familiar with this view on the right, which is a, a network chart, a link chart. Um, but the view on the left is, is the timeline kind of uh, mirror to that. So the view on the left here is Chronograph. And just to give you an idea of why you might need this, let, let's have a look at this network. It's a good example of it. We have a graph is very good at showing you the shape of a network. It shows you who the most well-connected people are, who they talk to, where the clusters and groups are. Um, if I were to look at this person here, uh, Ella, in the chart, I can see that she's very well-connected. She's connected to the kind of yellow group of people and the red group and the blue group. So the, the graph is telling me that she's well-connected. But if I click on her, what's happened over here on the left is that the chronograph has shown me her personal timeline. And I can now see not just how she's connected, but exactly every single individual phone call that she made to these other people. So I can see, for example, that in uh, September, she, she made a lot of calls to Barry up here. Um, I can see Barry uh, appearing in the chart as I, uh, as I move my mouse over. Um, and I can see most of her phone calls have been with Victoria down here in the red group. And I can see that, in fact, her connection to the yellow group is, is really not that uh, significant. She's, in fact, if I zoom in on this, I can see she really just made four very quick calls in January to one person in the yellow group, never got anything back in return. So the timeline is, is telling us that there's a lot more information than the chart can alone. But the chart is, is what enabled me to find Ella in the first place and identify a well-connected person. So you can see that a timeline view and a chart view, they, they really complement each other very well. It's not one or the other. It's two different ways of showing the same information. If I'm interested in the communications between Ella and Diane, I can click it in the timeline and immediately see what those communications patterns look like in the chart and get an idea of how these two people uh, interact with each other. So that's the idea. And the Chronograph site, as with all of our products, um, comes with all the tools you need to get started. It comes with rich demos that show you how to, uh, uh, what you can do with it. Um, and you know, most crucially of all, it gives you example code. So we can take a look, for example, find a 
find a view that we like. If I want to get this kind of uh, flowchart kind of diagram, and then I can have a look on the right hand side, and it'll show me exactly what the uh, the data needs to look like for um, to generate these timelines. So um, very very easy to use and develop with, I think. But Katarina is now going to tell you much more about what the developer experience is. So uh, with that little introduction out of the way, I'll hand over to you, Katarina. Yes, hello. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining today's webinar. I am Katarina Bausi. I am a solutions engineer working for um, Cambridge Intelligence. And partially, my role is to introduce new customers to the features of our toolkits, but also uh, another part of my role is to integrate our toolkits with an existing application. And that it, what makes me really happy every single time is seeing the connected data come to life through our toolkit. So a good toolkit, according to my uh, experience and opinion, shouldn't require a huge amount of effort to breathe life into our data. And for that reason, here are the top five things I love about Chronograph. Um, the first one is the ability to pretty much plug and play um, the Chronograph timeline into our application. Chronographs gives you quite a lot of functionalities even after the initial load of the data into the timeline. And for argument's sake, let's just give, uh, I will just give you a quick example where we've got some um, raw communication data that we have received from the back end of our, let's say, application. In there, what we can see is that we've got uh, some information about the calls that have happened between two numbers, the time period associated with that particular call, and of course, the phone numbers in there. Um, about the phone numbers, we've got information about the name of the people owning the phone number and the country and region of origin. How do we turn this data then into our chronograph format? Uh, first of all, Chronograph understands two types of elements. It understands events and entities. Entities are the key actors of the data set. They span across the x-axis of the visualization and they are connected to each other via events. Events are the actions performed by the actors. They can either be instantaneous or occupy a certain period of time. And how we have transformed our communications data set into entities and events, it is really straightforward. And as you can see, the formats really look quite similar. So um, the entities of our data set are what uh, was in the row format, the phone numbers. And we can also decorate that with additional information, such as the name now becomes the label of the entities, and we can store any external additional metadata that we have within the data property of our chronograph entities. The events, again, really similar to the calls information we had in the raw data set. What we have under the events are the actual calls. We've got the information about the from and to, the directionality of the call inserted within the entity IDs array. Here, we can dictate the connection between the actors. And of course, we have the timestamp. We have uh, the times associated with this particular call. In this example, they are not instantaneous. They occupy a period of time. They are, after all, phone calls. Now, loading that data into our timeline visualization, we will be presented with something looking like this. And that is because the data set that I have uh, introduced within the chronograph, or within chronograph timeline, was a fairly big data set. And chronograph quite cleverly uh, aggregated that information into a heat map. The heat map now shows how many uh, shows how many events involve an entity or a group of entities by the color saturation. However, when you start zooming in to uh, the view over here, if you start uh, zooming in to, from the heat map view, you smoothly transition into an event view. And even from the beginning in the heat map view, it's quite easy for us to understand the concentration of events depending on the color of each particular tile. So this has been done without any code uh, involved whatsoever. It comes out of the box. The only thing that Chronograph asks from us is to translate our raw data into something it would understand. Another really 
cool, another two really cool features that come out of the box with Regraph at this level and throughout our manipulation of um, the capabilities is that of number one, focus, which is something that we can see clearly on the screenshot over here. Uh, focus can be enabled by clicking on this bullseye icon next to the um, entity of interest. Right now I have focus on Grant Robertson, which particular, which practically means that I am only able to see this entity on my screen, as well as the associated events and entities with this focus to one. Next to it, you see a pin icon, which actually allows me to pin Grant Robertson on uh, my entities list, which means that if I zoom out, I will not, I will never lose that person from my entity list, regardless of the selected time range. Another really common uh, request that we get when we start playing uh, with data and uh, manipulating their look and feel and so on is that of starting to color code the entities or events according to uh, some sort of underlying characteristics they might have. So going back to the dummy data set that we have uh, loaded in, the transformated, uh, the translated version into chronograph, uh, what we might um, what somebody might ask us to do is to start color coding the entities depending the region depending on the region that they come from so let's say we want to color code people from southeast in a magenta kind of color north america into blue and so on how we would normally do that we would create a schematic file where um, you would look through all the elements and look for that particular uh, condition and start applying the styling properties on top of that. However, Chronograph has made our lives a lot e easier in this scenario because what uh, we can do instead is provide a type property on the entities of the visualization that dictates the basis of the condition. So at this point, we are assigning the type to be the region uh, of this particular entity and also we can provide an object called entity types where we say which are the styling conditions we are about to apply depending on the type. So right now what we are saying over here is that all the types, all the entities that have type southeast are going to be colored with that magenta color, their label is going to be colored in the same color and we are renaming the label to be formerly Southeast or whatever uh, other property you might wish to call them. So after uh, specifying all these information on the entities, uh, you will end up having a visualization looking like this. So at this point, we have uh, we are able to see clearly the three different um, entity types on our screen and the styling is applied properly. We can see all uh, Europe being green, North America blue, Southeast being magenta. Again, uh, you are able to now expand uh, the different entity types and have a closer look at the underlying elements and the underlying entities of the visualization. And what is really nice also right here is that we can see that even the events kind of reflect that information. Without doing anything on the events, that styling, that's minimal code that we have applied on the visualization has translated that information in there because now our events are gradient links. So basically, we can see that, uh, for instance, over here, Evelyn Beck has received a call from somebody on the southeast simply be by looking at the color in there and at vice versa. At the end, we can see that these are people calling Europe. Again, all the previous capabilities, the ability to move from a heat map view into one that consists of events only is still in there and we can start expanding and uh, looking, drilling down into uh, our data sets and our times, uh, our time windows of interest quite easily by interacting with the charts straight out of the box. Another uh, task that is traditionally uh, quite difficult to implement is that of grouping. So back to our previous data set, we have color coded, we have applied conditional formatting, but now somebody comes back and asks us to group our entities by their country of, in of um, sorry, uh, their country of origin. How do we do this in uh, Chronograph? 
Well, what we do is pretty similar to what we did before. First of all, it is really important to include the information that we are going to group by within the data property of the entities. So all of our entities need to have a country, um, a country property within their data uh, object. And then we're going back to the entities and providing, providing the group by property. In there, we're saying which is the property that we're going to group our entities by. And of course, you can provide multiple elements in here in order to create nested groups or even uh, specify different groups uh, depending on the type of interest. At the moment, what we want to do is just group by the countries, and that is really straightforward. We just provide the group by property on the entity types, and the result is this. Now we can clearly see the breakdown of the countries within the Europe type. We can see that France, Germany, and the UK are the countries uh, that uh, fall within the Europe uh, type, Canada and USA for North America, Southeast is Australia and Singapore. And of course, as we did before, you're able to expand each grouping individually and look at the underlying entities in more detail. But of course, uh, what is the most eye-catching and most uh, important thing when it comes to visualizations is interactivity. This is a really key feature uh, that we need almost every single time to integrate in our visualizations in order to enhance the user experience, make the end user ask for the information, and of course, synchronize the different components of our visualization dashboard. And this can be achieved through Chronograph quite easily due to the big amount of events, uh, the plethora of events uh, they are offered uh, through Chronograph. So we do have, of course, all the classic events such as click, double click to detect what kind of um, interaction uh, the uh, end user has performed on the timeline. However, we also offer more timeline specific events such as expand, focus, pin, um, to detect what the exact action the end user has uh, performed on the chart and enhance it even more with additional information or other interactivities. Some examples of the ways we can use events to enhance the experience um, while the user interacts with our timeline is, for instance, tooltips hovering over a particular event uh, can give us information, important information on the event itself and or we can also dig, dig, dig uh, even uh, more in our data set to look for um, the people it connects or the duration of the event itself or any kind of additional information you want to provide in there. Similarly, another really important feature is the ability to synchronize the different dashboard components. In this particular example, what we are doing is making sure that the selected range of the timeline on uh, the left is also represented within the data of uh, the graph visualization on the right. So when we update the range on the timeline, we filter out any information that is no longer active within the selected range of the timeline. And of course, this is really important because every information we have available on our dashboard should be in sync in order to avoid inconsistencies. Another really cool feature that I would like to highlight is that in order to make uh, our timeline visualization is the integral part, an integral part of our applications. Uh, we need to make the communication between the timeline and the rest of the components a two-way communication. So you saw earlier that changing the range updates the graph visualization. Now it's really important to make this communication into a two-way communication and therefore clicking on something on the graph visualization on the right hand side updates the focus of the timeline on the left hand side clicking on adrienne will focus on adrienne as well on the timeline lastly uh, we are continuously working on evolving this new product chronograph and making sure that it provides more and more insights uh, for each end users quite easily and smoothly. The latest addition that we have in that area is that of scale wrapping. Scale wrapping helps us 
uh, basically detect patterns in our visualization uh, by positioning the events based on their timestamp. So you can easily identify trends on a daily, weekly, monthly, or annual basis. And all this, as you can see, with one line of code. Um, so uh, let's see scale, wrap, uh, scale wrapping in action in the uh, example that we were building so far. So uh, scale wrapping will allow us basically to switch uh, the way our data was presented. And rather than showing the full data set right now, we, are, we have switched our scales at the top to focus on the days of the week. And right now, what we can see quite clearly is that uh, the concentration of events uh, on weekdays around nighttime probably is uh, a lot uh, smaller than, for instance, around the weekend. So we expect that normally people during the we uh, weekdays would go uh, to sleep rather than Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, they will keep on communicating, keep on exchanging phone calls uh, throughout uh, the night as well. Similarly, this is also shown um, during, if we switch the scale wrapping on a daily uh, basis, and we can see that there is some downtime uh, at um, quite late, in my opinion, uh, during um, the day. And of course, the phone calls continue throughout uh, the rest of the day as normal. So thank you very much for um, uh, paying attention to this uh, five things that I love about Chronograph. They do, most of them have one thing in common. It's really easy to integrate Chronograph into your visualization and the functionalities that come out of the box are really amazing and they can help you get as many insights as possible from your uh, timeline visualization. So if you have um, any questions, uh, please uh, post them uh, on um, or in here and uh, Dan or me will get back to you to answer those. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Katharina, uh, for that. Uh, that was great. And hopefully that in inspired you to uh, to give Chronograph a try. Um, it is very much available to give it a try, um, I should say. And uh, you can you can request a trial lots of different ways. You can contact us through um, uh, by email. You can go to any of our sites, the Keylines or Regraph sites, um, or our own website. There's the address up there on the screen. Uh, plenty of ways. I'm sure you'll find out how to uh, get a trial and as well as trying it out, of course, um, it is a very new product, uh, relatively new product. And so we're really interested in your feedback as developers on the whole experience. And uh, I will certainly be uh, very keen to uh, kind of uh, align our roadmaps with yours and, uh, and and get your input into future versions of the product because it, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of exciting stuff going into that uh, product over the coming months uh, as well. So. Um, yeah, please do put the questions in the in the chat panel. We we had a couple of questions in advance that people sent us before the meeting. Um, so uh, one of them was how can I try Chronograph, which we, we just covered, and another one was um, uh, what are the main differences between Chronograph and Keylines. I think you probably got a good answer to that from the webinar so far. But uh, you know, as I said at the start, uh, they're really complementary views. You can point them at uh, uh, similar raw data, but um, one of them is showing a sequence of individual events on a timeline or summarizing those events, um, and the other is showing the, the connections um, within a network. Um, and someone else asked the question um, in advance, what are, um, is the chronograph data model the same as the key lines data model? So I, I thought I'd, I'd maybe just say a little bit more about that. So as you saw from, uh, from Katarina, uh, they're not the same data model, uh, and that is deliberate. Um, the, um, the, the the graph data model is obviously very well known. A graph is always one link connects two nodes. Uh, you have nodes and a link, and a link has exactly two nodes, one at either end of it, and that's that's the model. Um, with chronograph, we wanted to be much more flexible because a timeline isn't necessarily the same thing as a graph. So, for example, you might represent a link on your graph um, uh, between two people as, as summarizing a thousand emails that those people have sent each other in one link. But in Chronograph, you would you would represent that as a thousand separate events because you want to be able to see those events and, and their sequence. So in, in some cases, one link in Keylines corresponds to many events in Chronograph. Um, and it could also work the other way too. So if, for example, you were modeling a meeting between four people, 
Um, to do that in key lines, you would you might want to put a link between every pair of people. So you might have six links um, connecting uh, those four people together in key lines. But in chronograph, you might just have one event representing that meeting. The meeting would have four participants. It would have a start time and an end time, uh, but it would be a single event. Um, so it's it's not one to one between the two. In many cases, it is, and uh, in Katerina's example, it was. And so it's very easy to um, to uh, to translate from one to the other. We make it as easy as we can. But um, the chronograph model is a little bit more flexible. You can have events with multiple participants or no participants or only one. Um, so uh, the they're, they're deliberately different to allow you that flexibility. The key thing is, um, it's it's not it's not just another graph layout. It genuinely is a representation of individual events. So that's the way you, you load data into it. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Uh, happy to follow up with people afterwards on that. So um, uh, with that, I don't see any other questions on the chat. This is if you are typing one in, I'll give you a few more seconds to finish it. But uh, otherwise, we'll assume we'll follow up. Uh, with you later if you have any questions. As I say, do give it a try, do visit the website, um, have a go at developing with it, play with some of the demos, uh, and we would love to have your feedback on the product. It's uh, We think it's very exciting, we think it really adds a big extra dimension to your, um, uh, your graph applications, so uh, we'd love to hear from you. But with that, I still don't see any more questions, so I will just say thank you very much to Katerina for her uh, presentation and tour. Uh, thanks to all the attendees for joining us and uh, look out for that uh, webinar recording in your email uh, in the next few days. But, uh, thanks very much. Have a good uh, rest of your day.